Tons of ancient volcanic rock are being transformed into works of fine art on New Plymouth's coast, coastal walkway. 27 artists, including three from overseas, have set up camp on the popular walkway as part of the biennial Te Kupinga International Stone Sculpture Symposium. Our Taranaki Whanganui reporter Robin Martin went along to take a look. Established 18 years ago, Te Kupenga aims to foster Taranaki's reputation as a centre of excellence for the stone sculpture art form. The event starts with the artists, each of whom have had to apply to take part, getting a few minutes to choose two andesite boulders to work on, each weighing about a tonne. Co-organiser Michelle Parker says the quality of Taranaki andesite lies at the heart of Te Kupenga. It's uh, originally from the mountain and it's made its way over thousands of years down to the awa, the, the rivers. Some carvers let the stone dictate to them. They talk to the stone and the, talk, uh, the stones talk back. Other carvers like me are a bit more sort of methodical um, and geometric. Everything's measured, things are blocked out initially and then the form starts to come from there. Ms Parker says her own piece is architectural in nature. I've used the basis of a spiral for my idea uh, where I've cored through the middle. Um, I have found that the stone's really soft so I've had to adapt to my plan a couple of times uh, which is why I've got two spirals running through it and decided that I'll still put the holes through to make use of the light. Australian Silvio Oponi took his inspiration from nature. I found a piece of brownish chocolate coloured andesite when I was given free reign for 10 minutes to choose a rock and that's made the two Maui dolphins and then I found another greenish coloured rock which is the one that I'm working on now and I'm carving a seal chasing a kawai. Wow. The kawai's got about that much chance. Mr Oponi said he was aware of the Maui dolphin's plight and could visualise its form. I've got a filing cabinet of, I don't know how many thousand different creatures in my head and whatever I'm going to do I just pull out that filing cabinet drawer and take out what they look like and then stitch it together and make whatever suits that particular rock. Thames artist Jocelyn Pratt has been attending the symposium since it began. She likes to find beauty in the mundane. This is actually a stylized piece of a shin bone. Um, you know, when you feed the dog a little shin bone, it's a treat, and these, um, the little slice of the shin bones are so many different shapes and really exciting, I think they're really beautiful. So this is stylized for that. And because it's such a beautiful black stone, I actually really wanted a contrast. So um, I spent about seven hours with a little ball making all this texture, and then I painted it silver for a bit of bling. Ms Pratt says one of the best things about the symposium is being able to share ideas. So for a symposium for me is actually working and learning from other people, so um, enjoying, I guess, um, and being inspired by other people's creativity and um, just also the energy and the buzz of so many sculptors, 25 sculptors working together. Opunaki artist Chauncey Flay has created one of the more unusual pieces. My sculpture is a 2.5 metre high stack of 15 geometrically cut stones, which all come from one deconstructed stone. Mr Flay says it's a commentary on the nature of time. The age of stones um, it makes our existence seem really insignificant and my own sort of mortality in the, in the context of the lifespan of these stones uh, sort of puts everything into perspective. So I break the stone um, into small pieces and, and reconstruct it kind of as a, as a mark making process um, on that stone but um, reconstructing it into a new form which will then continue on. Mr Flay admits he's had some interesting reactions to the work, especially from children who wonder how it remains upright. The artists have to finish their works by Friday before the site opens for public viewing ahead of an auction on February the 1st. Last symposium, the most expensive piece sold for $17,000. Inamutu Motihotaka o te Ahiahi nei, ko Robin Martin Ahau.